Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show from gorgeous, lovely, stunning South Africa. You'll notice the police sirens in the background. <laughs> I'm in amazing, uh, I'm in Johannesburg and I'm actually staying with my friend Wes Pollen. He's another CF that you might have seen me doing some shenanigans with. Um, but hey, for those of you guys that are new to the Crystal Crawford Show, welcome. This is a show where I, Crystal Crawford, uh, well, I, I take a topic and I riff in and around it using the access consciousness tools. And if you're new to access consciousness, I really, really, really can't talk about them enough or the tools enough. Um, you know, access for me, I've been involved for about seven years, was a total life saver, life changer. And um, today I called the show what I did and how it changed everything. Because I've got a call coming up um, in the next week or so, I think, called How to Make a Demand. Camilla, hi. And um, so, so this, this topic of and looking at um, what it takes to actually change something has been really up and I've been looking at it. Hi, Bruna. So if you guys have um, an area of your life where you're not really clear on what it would take to change it, um, you can ask about it in the comments and I will talk about it. But I want to sort of go into uh, what I did and how it changed everything. <laughs> And of course, this is going to be a non-linear romp through a set of tools that you can use to change anything that you'd like to in your life. Hi, Tanya. Um, I've been spending a lot of time this week connecting with and um, having sessions with entrepreneurs. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you're creating in your life, if it's business or money or, you know, relationships or whatever. The thing that changes anything is is when you make a demand of yourself that it change. And I see this, um, you know, misidentified and misapplied a lot over, you know, the groups of people that I facilitate and I play in, where people seem to think that you've got to demand something of the universe. It's like when you don't have a mon enough money come in, you demand of the universe, and then the universe will finally deliver what it should deliver. Right? That's not actually how that works. Um, money changes, business changes, um, Everything changes when you're willing to make a demand of you. Now, I've, I have so many different stories of this. And of course, when you get on live video, like all the stories, like leave your head. Um, but if you guys know of, if you guys think you've got some friends on Facebook that might appreciate a conversation about how to change anything, would you share this for, with them for me? Uh, hey, Justine, access has been life-saving for me too. That's amazing. Okay, so let's get down to it. What I did and how it changed everything. Um, I'm actually going to tell you the most recent story of where I'm, how I'm using this because, you know, so I've been an access facilitator now for about six years. So I'm, I travel the world. I do all these live classes. I've got amazing online classes. A lot of you guys have participated in those with me and, um, and I'm a person and like every person, my business and my life does these like, you know, sort of dips, general upward trend, but you know, sometimes you have these like plateaus and these, you know, dips and things. And so as I've been expanding my live class element to the business and, you know, expanding that team and spending a lot of time and energy on the live classes, my online class thing has gone like this. Not, not for any reason other than I've just been putting my attention somewhere else. So where this is showing up for me lately is you know, as my business is growing, and this is hap this happens in your life, as your business grows, as your, um, as you change, as the space that we're all aware of gets greater, something different becomes required of you, right? Like you're looking around, like not recognizing anything, and and needing direction, so to speak, and you don't recognize the space that you are. You don't recognize the friggin' choices you have now. Like, I mean, that just that's what happens. We use these at crazy access consciousness tools, or you make a lot of new choices in your life. And all of a sudden you look around and you don't recognize anything. And so, so for me in my business right now, and this is, I'm using this story to describe how you use this tool I'm talking about. Um, I was looking at what would I have to do? What would I have to choose here for this to change? What would I have to choose here for, you know, for, for the revenue to go up? What would I have to choose to have, just have more money? And what would I have to choose to like four times this business? Um, what have I already been choosing? Also an excellent question. What have I already been choosing that is generating that? And, and what else would I have to add to not only generate the future, but to have, you know, more money now or more clients now or whatever. And um, just today, I just got really clear that 
you know, I was, I was doing payroll and paying people and stuff. And I'm like, this is not enough money for us. This, this is just not enough money for all of us. <laughs> and I've structured my business in a way where, you know, everybody gets paid and then I get paid. And then, and that really, it works for me because I was, I'm paying everybody. I'm like, this is not enough money for everybody to be making. And so this changes now. And today with that demand, a lot of other things got really, really clear. And it was a demand of me. It wasn't a demand of the universe, but it was like, this fucking changes now. We're not actually living like this anymore. And that right there, this changes now and we're not living like that anymore, pretty much sums up what a demand is. Now, how you get there is how you get there. And that's where we're gonna look at on the call uh, is your, your things, like what's your thing? What do you have going on right now? And if you guys have something going on right now that you're actually not sure, um, how to change, please give me a two sentence synopsis and I'll talk about it. Okay. Cause I can't read a paragraph. I'm glad you like this conversation. Hi, Patty. Hi. Hi guys. Um, so, so that was just me today. That's me using this tool today. And listen, guys, I've used this tool. Like every time I want to change something, this is the tool that I use to change it. You know, I, with all these sessions that I did this week with all these entrepreneurs, I had a lot of people asking me about my business and what I've been doing and how inspiring it is. And, you know, and every single thing that's shown up in my business has come from a demand that I've made of myself to have it. I remember actually, um, and I'm hoping that me using these stories in my business is helpful for you in any part of your life because I've used them in every part of my life. Uh, so I remember actually when having live classes around the world was just, uh, it would be nice. It was, a, it was an, it, it would be nice if, right. And just so you guys know, like it would be nice if does not a life or a business create, <laughs> it would be so nice if I would just love to travel when you do, I would just love, or you do, it would be nice. You're doing fantasy. You're doing, you know, you might as well be watching Netflix and just like crying to the people on the screen and like, Oh my God, it's so beautiful. You're not actually choosing it. You're not having it. You're not like, this is, this is going to be my life in it. Right. You just, it would be nice. So that's something just to know, like when you hear yourself talking, if you're, it would be nice in it, just give your head a shake and just get that you're not really choosing anything. Hello, Sue Ellie. Nice to see you. Hi, Reshma. Hi, Marlene. So I was, it would be nice in having global classes all over the world. And then I don't know when this happened and I don't know that time frames are even relevant, but there came a moment where I was like, I was, I was pussyfooting around with live classes. I was like, you know, I would, I would put one on and then it would have low attendees. And then I would, uh, the thing I would say to justify that is, um, what would I say? Oh, this is what I would say. Live classes are harder to create than online classes. Now I know lots of people that don't have that as a reality that, so it's, that was my point of view and listen, your point of view creates your reality. Okay. So I was creating my reality just perfectly and powerfully creating my reality. Live cl online classes are easier to create than live classes. And I don't know why this changed, but at some point I kept hearing myself say that and I got so fucking bored with it. <laughs> and listen, people like us only change things when they're bored. You need to know that about yourself too. You only, you don't, you'll never change things out of frustration and you'll never change things out of judging yourself into it. You'll only change it when you're bored. So I got, I just got bored of listening to myself say that. So finally one day I was just like, you know what? For me to create the world I want to have, I have to be willing to do live class. I just knew, I knew that I had to be willing to do live classes and it wasn't the most comfortable thing. It's definitely not the most cost effective thing when you're first starting to create live classes. It takes about three years to get, you know, live classes to the point where they're actually making money. Just so you guys know, you guys see us out there facilitating. We're not making any money right now on this shit, you know, cause venues are expensive and it's it, a lot, everything costs, right? You're flying, you're flying, you're staying. Um, you're getting a venue, you're paying for flowers, manuals, it's, they're, they're cost heavy. But if you're willing to start choosing that, choosing to facilitate all around the world, it starts to grow and it takes about three years. So you have to be, if, in choosing that, you've got to be willing to support that and support the creation of that and nurture those connections for about three years. And so I was really aware of when I started to choose that, that I needed to have revenue coming in from other places. And so I had developed and created, you know, all the online stuff that you guys get to play in. So what was my point? So, so I was doing this thing where live classes are hard, hard to create. They're hard to create. And finally, it just got to a point one day when I was re really aware that if I would choose it, 
it would create a greater future, it would create a greater world, it would create something greater for me, it would create something greater for everybody. And, um, and I started, you know, seeing the effects of people meeting me in person, the effects of my body with other people's bodies in the same room, just having conversations, I got to see, I started to see the gift of me, because I started, remember, I've asked the universe to show me the gift of me. And and that did something for me. And I just made a different demand of me. Like, okay, I'm getting over my points of view. It was a demand to get over my points of view and to begin creating this thing that I didn't know how to create. And from that demand has come like almost all of 2020 is booked. I could be booked all of 2021 right now with three-day body classes. And I'm not even a three-day body class facilitator yet. I'm still creating the certification. And that is fucking amazing. And so that, so it totally changed. Now, from the moment that you make a demand, and, and Masi, I see your question. I will address it. Don't go anywhere. Um, if you guys, oh, and Patty, I see your question. So let me finish this and then I'll talk about your stuff. Um, from the moment you make a demand, what occurs is the clarity of what's required to begin actualizing what it is you're going to have no matter what like today from today's demand to go no we're we're increasing the revenue i'm i'm the guy i'm the source i can do this it's happening like i'm not living like this anymore you better fucking believe there's going to be a different energy coming out into the world from my business from that demand now it will also take time now what do i mean by that well i don't have any other words to describe what i mean by that i mean whatever that means I mean, it's going to take whatever it takes for it to occur. You know, for me to actualize a thriving live class facilitator all over the world is going to take a minute. You know, it's going to take three years, four years. It's going to take whatever it takes. And am I willing to commit to that process no matter what the fuck it takes? It's huge. And so, you know, there's other things along the way where you get to facilitate yourself and keep continue to choose in the direction that you've chosen. Um, but it starts with the demand to have something different. So let me go back here. So Patty, I have one foot as an employee and another as an entrepreneur. How can I have more speed to my baby business? Well, my question would be like, what demand can you make of yourself that would change it? Um, and also, so it's like, it's what demand can you make of yourself to change it? And also like, what do you need to be willing to do, even if you don't like it, to support what it is that you're choosing sometimes it works for people to just like leap into the abyss of you know just fucking creating your business some people can do that i did that i did that however i had also nurtured and cultivated a social media presence and people enough people knew who i was that when I did jump off the cliff and I did start putting, you know, calls and programs out there that people could pay me for, people knew who I was, right? So I had done something that made that a possibility. I see people leaping off the cliff, like quitting their job. I want this, I wanna just do access now. I don't wanna do anything else or, you know, and they quit their jobs and they haven't yet cultivated anybody knowing who they are. And then they wonder why they have to go and get another job. So. On, from one point of view, I did that. From another point of view, I, I worked, I had jobs. I had jobs until the moment that I just stopped and I put my own back up against the wall and I started creating money from the other things that I had already generated, which was the presence in the world. So it's both. It's making a demand that you do whatever it takes. Um, you know, maybe set yourself a time frame and see if that works. All of us are going to have these different tricks that we have to employ to to get ourselves to create at the level that we're that we're capable of and so many 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 times you have to trick yourself into choosing what it is you're already capable of choosing but you had to do a trick to get there so like setting a time limit is a trick setting a deadline is a trick it doesn't work sometimes sometimes it doesn't <laughs> you may need a different trick i needed the trick of quitting a job and having only 500 dollars left to my name I'm not recommending that. <laughs> that was not necessarily the easiest, but I, I couldn't do it another way. I needed that intensity. I needed that level of pain, right? So it's whatever it is. But what would you have to demand of yourself for it to change? 
Uh, okay, Masi, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but you said, hello, I love the conversation. Just a question. I'm about to start a new business, but I'm super scared and I don't know if I'm ready for it or no. Well, listen, you're never ready. Ever? Not ever. You're never ready. You're never going to be ready. You're never going to feel ready. You're never going to feel confident. You're never going to feel like you have all your ducks in a row and you never will have all your ducks in a row. So you're always going to feel wrong, underprepared, like you don't deserve it and that you're shit. Truly. And I want that to be light and good news <laughs> because it doesn't matter. It's not relevant if you're ready. What's relevant is what are you choosing? And listen, with every choice, you get awareness. So, you know, you start a new business. I'll give you, I'll tell you a story. So some of you know that I have another company that is baby, baby, baby company called Club Choice. It's a, it's awareness swag. So we do shirts and, and mugs and things and water bottles and all kinds of stuff. And if you go to my personal profile, you can see a link there and you can go check it out. It's still baby, baby because we created it. We were super excited about it and we didn't, we made money. We've actually made money in this business so far. Not a lot, but we made some. Um, but we also got a fuck ton of information when we first launched it. Like uh, I discovered, I didn't know how drop shipping worked. So it turns out the drop shippers charge you and then you have to cover everything. And then you get, then PayPal was holding all my funds for like a month because it was a new PayPal. So I had to cover everything. And then we didn't have any money from the people that had paid. And then, so we found stuff out about that. Turns out that when you're starting a drop shipping company, you need a bit of, you need a bit of a cash capital thing going on that we did not have. So thank God it didn't take off and go gangbusters because uh, I couldn't have supported that. So I got that, that, that information. We got information about countries to ship to and countries that we need to not ship to because when we ship to those countries, it takes five months to get something. That's ridiculous. You know, we got information about all kinds of things that we didn't know. We would never have gotten that information if we hadn't have just fucking launched and started. So it's still a, it's still a business. It still exists. You can actually still order from it. Um, but we haven't put any new energy into that because we've been building some cash capital and we did it. My friend Shana and I created some capital through another business that we just started um, called Boomtown Branding. And now we've got a little nest egg that we can like sink back into Club Choice so that we can begin putting out new, really, really generate it into like a million dollar a year, at least revenue stream. But again, we wouldn't have gotten that information if we hadn't just started and so you're never ready you're fucking never ready and you will not know what it will take to actually create your business into a success until you start and um you know with some businesses like i had a pizzeria for three years i don't know if you guys know knew that um some businesses you know that business took us like we sunk a ton of money into it up front and actually needed more information on how to run it and what kind of volume was going to be required to support it. We, we needed to ask more questions before we jumped into that for it to really succeed. But even the failure of that informed all my future choices. Like even that failing, like we, he ended up going bankrupt, um, gave me so much goddamn information for the future. So it's not even relevant what the results are because like you're going to need whatever you need to move forward in your life. And some of us need bunches of information in different ways that we wouldn't get another way. That is only going to come through choosing the thing that's right in front of us and starting. Yeah. And Karen said, yes, that's the difference. Choosing something is step one, but committing to something is step two. Well, what's interesting is that when you make a demand of yourself that something changed, that is in that moment you have committed to creating something different. And there's a section in the foundation manual that has always just made me grin. It's like the section in the manual is like this big, it's like three sentences. And the first sentence says, commitment is being. And there's a lot of talk in access consciousness, you know, like if you guys run in these circles and you listen to us facilitators babble on and on, you know, a lot of us talk about committing to your life, like really committing to your life. And, and for a while, that was a big conversation. Like, you know, then it goes in waves with these things. And now it's sort of died down, but it still pops up here and there. And it, and it seems to be sort of this mysterious thing. How do I know if I'm committed to my life? How do I, how can I tell? <laughs> and, and so, I facilitate foundation a lot. I like 10 times last year, I've got another bunch of them this year. And it, so that section comes back into my awareness a lot. And it says commitment is being. And I was like, commitment is being. I was like, what is that? So I was looking at, you know, looking at it, looking at it, looking. And I was like, 
wow, like once you, once you really choose something, you're being it. You're being whatever the fuck it's going to take for that thing to change. Like just today with my demand of like, this is changing. You better believe it's going to change. I will come back onto video fucking tomorrow, next week, next month, and I will have a different story to tell you. Why? Because I know me. And once I've made that demand and I've made that choice, I am, I'm embodying it. I'm now being it. So there's no way for it not to occur because it is me. It is me throughout my entire being and body. And, and so it isn't, commitment isn't something you do. And then once you're embodying it, then you, you notice different things. You notice when you are veering towards a direction that doesn't match that. You just notice more because you're being something. Or you notice when you go to judgment of yourself and you're like, well, never mind. You, because you're being something. It's so interesting. And it's, it's also very interesting to talk about because it seems very conceptual. But when you're in it, it's not conceptual at all. It's very clear. And so, you know, if you're trying to do commitment, then you're trying to externally place upon yourself something you think you should do or think you should be. But once you make a demand and you choose it, you're being it. That's it. And that's everything. And from there, creation is, seems to be so much, creation's easy. Because there is no, you're not function. there is no doubt in being. There's no fear in being. There's no, you, you aren't doing any of that distractor in planet universe anymore. You're doing being. You're being. And that's the gift of these goddamn tools that I'm so fucking grateful for, is you could start to ask, you know, what demand could I make here that would change this for me? What demand of me could I make here that would change this for me? And, you know, if, if, if this is an area for you where you've struggled or whatever, just come on the call because then you can actually ask your question. But there are also these times when you can ask that question, like, what demand here can I make here of me to change this? And, you know, you're asking from a space of having no intention of changing it while thinking you should. I see that a lot. And that's where a different kind of honesty with yourself is required that I, I've been willing to do with me only because I want my life to get greater. <laughs> like All this shit that I'm talking about is just because I want my life to get greater. It's like, I don't know that I would have ever made a new demand of myself if I didn't want something greater from me, you know? So you're, you, what you want as your life is going gonna, is gonna to facilitate you into greater demand if you're willing to let it. But um, uh, then I lost the plot there. Yeah. Anyway, maybe my point will come back. Okay, cool. Oh, P Patty, I love that you are never ready and it's not relevant. Yep, that's so true. Cool. Um, oh, and Nicolette, I will see you Friday night. Yes, you gorgeous thing. Mustafa, I don't know how to answer that question. And I'm so different already now. Yes, I am. And so Liga works with me in my business and all the people that work with me in my business get to see these changes. Um, and so how does it get any better than that? Yeah. So I guess my question for you is like with, with everything that you're, you're, you know, what are you asking for? What are you choosing? What do you want to have as your life? And look, that question doesn't mean like, what do you want to have on your vision board as your life? I mean, what do you want to be having as your experience of living? You know, uh, do you want to be living, you know, this is where you got to, so, oh, so many things all at the same time. Sorry. Somebody asked me today in a session, basically like what she, she said, you know, I noticed that in your business, you're like constantly putting new stuff out there and constantly doing classes and stuff like that. And I said, yeah. And, and she's like, how do you like, how does that work? Like <laughs> why? And I really looked at it and I was like, I said, because I have, I have expensive living I'm doing. Like my, what I'm choosing to do as my life is like not cheap. <laughs> and that has always driven, that has always driven my life forward. Now, whether or not that's right or wrong, I don't know, but it doesn't matter because it creates more consciousness in the world and it fucking creates more possibility and it gets me out there and it inspires me. And, you know, like traveling around to all these countries is not the cheapest thing, right? Like living where I'm living, um, having, you know, the, the things I want to have on my body and the way I want to do my hair, like I'm expensive, you know, and the world I want to live in and create takes money. 
And so I'm having that. That's it. I'm having it. And so that's what generates and creates the ideas and the business that you see. And what I've really been looking at lately, because I've accomplished so much of what I've set out to, to what I've chosen. When you choose, you accomplish it. You have it. I've done a lot of it. So now I've got to look at something bigger. Like what is, what's now? Like, what do I have to be willing to have as my life that I haven't been willing to choose that if I would choose, it would exponentialize this business with ease. And you're going to have to look at that all the time because as you create, as you choose and your life gets bigger, then you reach your things. And then most of us stop creating once we've reached the thing. And you might notice that with yourself. If you've, if you are, if the things seem to have stopped or you have no idea why they've slowed down or whatever, you got to look at the moment at which you reached your goal, you reached your target, you reached your choice because that's when most of us stop. And at that moment, you got to look back and go, okay, it was at that moment that I did the thing. Now you got to look at, okay, now what do I need to choose for this to grow even greater? And I don't know what that is for me right now, guys. I don't know what that is, but I do know there's a different demand that this fucking money thing changes because it is not working for me to live like this. It's not working for me to not have everything that I want to have. And my question for you is, is it working for you? Are you making what you're having now work for you? Are you, are you surviving it? Why? 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 For what reason? And that's the kind of stuff we can get into on the call. Um, you know, we can start looking at that for you personally, if you want to come get some facilitation around it. And I'll post the link in the, in the chat, if you guys want to come, it's next week. But, um, you know, you can't have what you say you want from just wishing and hoping for it. You've got to be willing to embody it and have it. And that's where making a demand comes in. And you know, you'll know when you're making a demand because your whole body will be involved. Your everything you are will be in it. You're like, okay, we're in it now, let's do it. So what would you need to be for you for what you're looking at right now to change? You know, if you're struggling in your relationship, what have you been unwilling to choose or be that would change it? If you're struggling with money, what would you have to be willing to, to be or choose that would change it? You know, if you're struggling with your business, what would you have to be willing to be or choose or embody that would change it? And I will be putting out a series of things on exercises that you guys can start to use. I'm going to create them as soon as I get home that are, you can sit in your chair and, and get into a different space because I get that this is such a unique conversation and it's a unique practice, but it is something that is imperative for us to get good at if we want something greater with our lives and we want something greater for the planet. And I am having that. That's my demand of me. And you're the, you are the only one you can compete with. You're the only one that you is good enough to compete with you. And so this race of demanding and more is between you and you and only because you can only because it makes you happy only because you are the one that's able to have that living and have that reality so what game do you have to step up with yourself and are you in the game yet and if not what would it take so you're invited on the call but also if you got anything out of this share this shit share this shit with people let people know that there's a different possibility out there. You be the catalyst for a different possibility with this and everything you are. And I'm so grateful you exist. I'm so grateful we're here now. And I will see you guys next week. And on the call. Bye.